The following program is a Greenlight Main production being brought to you in part by Bangor Savings Bank. It's the way life should be, Greenlight Main. Building Maine's economy, Greenlight Main. Start here, scale here, stay here. It's your main of mind. Building Maine's economy, one dream at a time. It's the way life should be. Welcome to the Greenlight Maine College Series. We have top talent throughout the state. That means that students want to start here, scale here, and stay here. And if they can prove that to our judges, they'll win thousands of dollars to invest and expand. We have a top experience panel of judges this series, and we really want to hear what you have to say and give some advice to our students. So let's start off with Martha Johnston from the Finance Authority of Maine. Thank you, Jillian. It's so wonderful to be here. You know, my top advice for all students, whether they're entrepreneurs or not, is to do everything you can to improve your own financial education. So take advantage of all the resources that are out there and honestly, come to famemain.com. We've got plenty of free resources. The more financially capable you are, it's going to serve you well. Awesome, famemain.com. Okay, next up, Jamie Dowdy from Bangor Savings Bank. Yeah, thank you, happy to be here. Uh, my advice would be, uh, if you've thought that you've worked hard enough, double down. Uh, it's highly competitive. So uh, there's other people that are working just as hard as you, and so double down on your on your work effort. Yeah. So if you're tired, you feel burnt out, just yeah. just do a little bit more little bit and more. push yourself further, and it'll be get, okay. Get that reserve down. Love that. Okay, and then we have Kay Karina from the Department of Economic and Community Development. What's your advice? Yeah, thanks so much. Um, honestly, I always take a different approach and be curious. The world is an incredible place and you're an incredible person and a part of it, and this is a great opportunity to explore. So be curious, try the world, see what's out there. Um, someone's always going to pull perspective um, and you're gonna learn so much by being curious. Very nice. Well, we appreciate you being here. We're going to talk to you in a few minutes. It's time for our first pitch, which is from Colby College. The company is called Scholar Sheets, and we have Peggy Jones and Ms. Insigna. Whenever you're ready, just go for it. About two years ago, my team and I flew into the United States to study our Colby from different parts of the world. Regardless of our many differences, we all had one thing in common the horrendous journey through the scholarship application process. In the United States alone, there are over 1.5 million scholarships available. Statistics show that over 42% of these scholarships can't be found through a simple Google search. After all, Google doesn't have the answer to all questions. That is why I'm thrilled to present to you Scholarsheets, a revolutionary scholarship resource platform that empowers students to find scholarship efficiently so that they can focus on what truly matters, their personal and academic growth. In the next slide, we'll talk a little bit about how we got here in the first place. This is my real life college application spreadsheet document that I worked on from 2020 and 2021. This incredibly detailed document took me months of work and I only ended up with two realistic choices. And that's a problem, all that time and effort is not something that every student can really afford, especially those from low-income backgrounds and international backgrounds, like a, a struggle that me and my co-founders intimately know. We talked to over 100 students, who are, those who are going through the college application process now and those who have been through it across several universities like Princeton and Cornell and colleges like Kobe and Thomas right here in Maine. We came up with three main points from the interview. One. Websites are full of irrelevant information. Two, students can't find scholarships that match their profile. And three, the overall attitude towards this whole process is that, quote and unquote, it is really effing difficult. To address these challenges, we have our next slide. Our platform leverages AI to essentially um, extract scholarship data and organize it into a centralized da data database. Um, this results basically into a uh, spreadsheet of scholarships, including um, scholarship name, award, uh, citizenship, eligibility requirements, and deadlines. With just a few clicks, students are able to find scholarships that match their criteria without the headache of having to dig through paragraphs of text. 
We also hope to include a profile functionality that allows students to further tailor their scholarships to who they are and their interests. For our business and marketing plan, Scholarship is targeting two demographics, students and institutions. Since accessibility is our driving force, we would, we would have free and premium versions for Scholarship. Institutions would have an administrative dashboard, a key metrics analysis, and can give premium access to their students. In the future, we would like to have a centralized application hub where students can fill out their forms and submit as many applications as they want once without having to go through it multiple times. Similar to Common App, but for scholarships. And with the money awarded from Greenlight, we would like to, to use it to essentially create an, um, and launch our online platform by the fall of 2024. Um, to facilitate the sort of scalability of scholarships, we essentially hope to have our functionalities free for any student, um, institution, and counselor for the first few months. Um, and we specifically hope to do business with people who are educated, uh, who are interested in education here in Maine. Um, so join us and together we can revolutionize and make college and educational access available to everyone, especially the ones who need it the most. Well done, fantastic. You're gonna help so many students. Okay, Martha, kick us off. Well, you've, you, know, you hit me right in my heart because I actually help people pay for college at the Finance Authority of Maine. And oftentimes we will get international students who reach out to us and the options can sometimes be very limited for the international students when it comes to USAID. So my question for you is when you think about your market and the accessibility, are you looking to offer that free to students regardless of their tie to an institution and then an institutional model uh, just amplifies your ability to reach students through a very more a direct channel. So what's your thoughts on that? That is exactly sort of like what we were looking at. Um, so this idea kind of started with the uh, with wanting it to be free to anyone who has like sort of at least an internet access. Uh, it was definitely really hard for us as we're you know low income and international uh, to really find free tools um, on the internet. So yes institutional access allows it to reach more people but our target demographic being students um, it should always be accessible to them. Jamie. Yeah, uh, congratulations, by the way. Um, what are the competitors uh, in the marketplace right now? Um, our competitors are actually, we have um, different scholarship um, websites available. And so the overarching like, team for scholarships is that these scholarships are available. Websites are available. There are tons of websites on the internet. But scholarship is sorting out all these important information into one centralized place. So. That is like our competitive matrix or our overarching like team for scholarships. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Hi, this is fantastic. Um, as somebody who also applied to so many schools as an undergrad, this is really helpful. Um, I want to know a little bit about how um, you're going to do some training for young people around how they can utilize this. Will it go through the counselors, through the schools? Will there be kind of step by steps available for young people available on your um, website? Yeah, I think that would be really like great to have in our website. I think it's um, really important that they you know, know how to use uh, and utilize these things. So it wasn't, uh, I don't think it was initially in our plan, but thank you for ra raising that up. And I think that we can definitely think about like collaborating specifically with counselors and um, uh, other schools, yeah. Great questions, great answers. We have to take a short break and hear from our sponsors. We'll be right back with Bowdoin College. Come on over. At Bangor Savings Bank, we understand that to deliver the best banking experience possible, meeting people where they are matters. That's how we fulfill our fundamental promise that you matter more. We are more than just a bank. We are friends, neighbors, and tireless advocates for the communities we serve. Wherever our customers are in their financial journey, we are there with them every step of the way. Right into the lens, okay. Famous brands, rugged quality, and the best values anywhere.
This is where you start your future, where you find the skills you need to succeed and the support to help you on the way, where you will find the power of innovation and creativity and the challenges to help you grow. Find a beautiful environment and a community that inspires, where you can turn your passion into your profession. This is where you start your life. This is where you belong. Thomas College. Welcome back to the Greenlight Main College Edition. We'd like to welcome Bowdoin College to the series for the very first time. The company is called Alpha Dupoy, and we have David Ma and Audi Paul Parikh. Whenever you're ready, look right at the judges and have fun. Hi, my name is Audi. My name is David, and we're Alpha Dubois. As a Bowdoin student receiving financial aid, I've seen and felt the transformative effect that a college education can have. But I'm also very, very aware of the costs. The cost of college is projected to skyrocket at a rate of 4.8% on average per year. Yet despite this, high school seniors routinely take on hundreds of thousands of debt in order to attend college. For them, it might be worth it, although it's often debilitating. Our company proposes a solution to this. We're creating a marketplace leveraging the income share model agreement, which is uh, an agreement where students commit to repaying a portion of their expected income in the future in exchange for tuition support now. This provides an invaluable safety net for newly grads, as if you make below a minimum threshold, you pay nothing. At the same time, compare that to a traditional loan with fixed repayment schedules that can often be suffocating. And this substantially removes the risk for the student borrower. Lastly, we're going to incorporate advanced machine learning techniques in order to fairly and accurately assess an individual's future expected earning. This will ensure equitable agreements can be reached by the investor and the student. Yeah, and there are a lot of examples of this like idea playing out in the real world. One really good example is with Stanford Law. Last year, they implemented a program where their law students could forego about $175,000 of their tuition in exchange for 10% of their income for 10 to 12 years. When they like, started this program, they decided that many students in the past felt that they couldn't follow the career choices that they really wanted to because of the financial burdens of you know, the debt. We want to take this idea and expand it to people all across the country, not just at Stanford Law. Uh, for example, in Maine. In 2016, Maine ranked 40th in the country for sending its high school seniors to college, with only about like, one in every two actually choosing to go towards higher education. The problem with democratizing this idea is that it's hard to find you know, people to actually invest, and that's because not everyone can you know, say, I'm not going to see my money back for 10 to 12 years. The re way we solve this is through our marketplace. Because like, you have the ability that whenever you need cash, you can trade your income share for some cash at that moment, it like, gives the promise of liquidity. This can attract more investors and lead to more capital, leading to this democratization that we wanted and leading to more students getting access to this. In addition, unlike some other income share agreements that have had their like, pitfalls and fallbacks in the past, we're not going to make any money from the agreements themselves. We're only going to make our revenue on the marketplace. This will help us align our interests with that of the students and investors alike. We're currently in talk with a lot of prominent tech experts and economists to try to help us in our goal. We hope that you'll join us in our mission to help support a revolutionary economic or educational financing model for students across Maine and beyond. Thank you. Thank you. That is one phenomenal idea. Love it. Thank you. All right, Martha, this is your wheelhouse too. This is my wheelhouse too. So I help people pay for college at the Finance Authority of Maine. So I love having conversations about this. I am familiar with income share agreements. I am not an expert, so don't worry. <laughs> no intimidation factor here. Um, I'm also familiar with student loan repayment programs, right? So maybe working for um, an employer that will pay part of your student loans in exchange for that service. I'm kind of curious, you know, how you see yourselves as more beneficial maybe than a student loan repayment model versus income share. I'm wondering if you've given some thought to that. So we actually have, and um, we think that like obviously it's great that there are like efforts to try to like repay these student loans. Like we were saying, it's like can be very debilitating. We want to try to like help people as much as possible. We're uh, we're saying that we're going to change like the baseline model. So instead of like dealing with those like fixed payment loans, we're dealing with this instead. There still has the ability for repayment options in the sense that if you want to like have a little bit of forgiveness for students, or, like help them out paying it, you can just help them buy back some of their shares. That's really the mechanism we have for students to you know stop making the payments and you know uh, make a clean sheet. Nice, thank you. I'd like to hear what the bank has to say. <laughs> yeah, so I work at a bank, and so we deal with risk every day. So the minute you were speaking, I was saying, okay, where's the downside risk here? So speaking of that, um, as an investor in this, uh, understanding that my payback is over a longer period of time, at the end of the day, there's still risk involved. What, is your, what are your thoughts about managing the downside risk? Well, man, I think the risk of it is, uh, while well, we're trying to work with a lot of nonprofits, for example, um, working for with colleges and programs, for example, like Stanford or 
Uh, in the past, Purdue has done it. I think they're trying to start it in more uh, national universities overall. So I think primarily this will be um, working with nonprofits, but also on the investor side. Uh, I think it will support a lot of grassroots kind of support for our students. For example, I really buy into the saying, like, it takes a village. So when you have like a prominent student in your small community that wants to go to college, everybody can pitch in. And when they succeed, everybody uh, reaps the boons. So. And we also have a couple of mechanisms to help out with risk and investors, uh, one of which is our machine learning model, like we right. said, to help accurately come up with um, you know, what we think the students can actually earn. In addition, we're also going to offer options like indices, where instead of just investing in one student, which might have more risk, you invest in like a group of students, like a certain industry, certain people from a community, certain people from a different school. And because we believe, you know, like as a, as a whole, students are going to do good. They're going to like help promote the economy. They're going to make a lot of money. By like, you know, diversifying across the students, it helps you know, leverage against that risk. Yeah. I, li I like the idea of spreading the risk, so congrats. Thank, Thank you. you. And Kay, you're an expert dealing with young people. I'm so excited about this. Um, I am curious about how young people are going to learn about this option and how to conceptualize what does X amount of my income over time look like for my investment into this post-secondary education. So my question to you is how are you going to teach young people and teach the college counselors and teach the schools and teach the communities about how this product is going to be like advantageous for them and how they are going to have buy-in for this yeah I think uh, well we're gonna reach out to a lot of schools and try to do for, for the first uh, few years of operations a lot of studies a lot of surveys a lot of research into um, kind of the model and how it works um, we've read a lot of papers about the income share agreement and how for example the really key component is it safeguards right so when you make below thresholds you don't have to pay and that's really helpful where somebody has maybe a career transition or they're going through something they cannot instantly start repaying back um, there's also ways of like a curved kind of percentage payback. So when you make more money, you're not actually penalized for making more money. Um, it's you pay less percent of, uh, of that back. So, yeah. and like David said, we're gonna try to work really closely with the colleges themselves, with students, to try to like spread as much education as we can. We're really trying to you know promote like student success. So although we don't have like great resources right now, we're gonna spend a lot of effort on trying to you know help students learn the best they can with this and make the best decisions for themselves. Very thoughtful process. Thanks, guys. You guys Thank rocked you. it. Thank you. All right, we have to take a quick break and hear from our sponsors. We'll be right back to talk to our judges, so don't go away. All right. With so many Medicare options, it can be confusing. At Martin's Point, we make your Medicare choices easy. Our all-in-one Medicare plans cover doctor's visits, hospital stays, and prescription drugs, dental, vision, and eyewear, fitness and wellness reimbursements, with premiums and co-pays as low as $0. As one of the highest-rated Medicare Advantage plans in New England, you can feel confident you're covered. Call or visit us online today to request your free Medicare Made Simple Guide. Whether you're a small business or a big business, whether you're cutting edge or looking at a traditional industry in a whole new way, whether you're on the coast, in the city, a small town, wherever, if you're an organization here in Maine, if you want to innovate and if you want to grow, we want to support you. We're the Maine Technology Institute. Personal branding happens both in person and online. Because online branding is so important, relevance and recognizability come down to searchability, your presence in a Google search. When people search for your name or your business, they want to see your expertise and authority. They want to see thought leadership. They want to see content that demonstrates your unique know-how. From LinkedIn posts and tweets, to news stories and opinion columns. So create content accordingly and get others to create content about you. It's easier than you think. 
content creation is like a muscle that you must flex each day. Even posting on other social media is considered content creation. With online content that communicates your personal brand, you will come across as more legitimate, professional, and ultimately trustworthy. Welcome back to the Greenlight Main College Edition. Our judges are going to take a deep dive into these two brilliant companies. Never in the history of this show have we had two college companies talk about college issues. So this is unbelievable. And I know this is your wheelhouse, so we'll start with you. Scholar sheets only because they pitch first. Great. Uh, yeah, so as I said, I mean, this obviously hits at the core of what we do, and oftentimes we don't have a lot of options for our international students. So I loved what Scholar Sheets pitched. I think for me, what I'm deliberating is the ability to stay in Maine. That's, um, you know, Maine is going to be a great proving ground, a small market. Um, but then what happens after that? So really hoping that a company like Scholar Sheets keeps its roots in Maine, even when it expands outside of Maine, because it would have to for sustainability. So that's where my head is at for Scholar Sheets. Awesome. Jamie. Yeah, well, both. Uh, so innovative, uh, high, high quality for both. Um, I was raising the question around sustainability as well, but uh, my questions on ScholarSheet is just the, the intellectual property on that. I, uh, during the break, I encouraged them to start pursuing that because it looks like it could be fairly replicable uh, by other entities, So, but very impressive. Great. Kay. Amazing. I, again, will reiterate how much I needed this. I still do need this. Um, and I think that it's so great, um, especially for young people who are trying to figure out what does, um, you know, their post-secondary journey look like maybe a little earlier on, so they're not really daunted by it towards the end of, um, you know, applying and everything. My question to them is going to be around how are they storing this data? Um, this is a lot of information and a lot of sensitive information and a lot for um, one platform to hold. So I'm wondering, about their data security and I'm wondering about what does this look like as a young person maybe goes from undergraduate to a master's degree, a master's degree to a PhD, and does that get to carry with them? Um, and again, how are we housing that information and how are we making sure that it's secure? Um, and you know, if we are uh, using AI, what does that look like in there? Nice, okay, switching gears now. Alpha Dubois, those guys are some Physics, math, science majors, I mean, they check all the boxes. They do. Um, so we had a great off-camera conversation where we could ask questions, obviously, with, with both um, groups of entrepreneurs. I think when I think about the income share agreement model, you know, really, what are they trying to compete with in the marketplace? But then more so for me, I really like them to focus on the idea of providing it across the spectrum of a variety of institutions. So income share agreements for schools that have large endowments, schools that aren't uh, well endowed at all and maybe still need to access that for their students, and then our public colleges and universities. Is there a model that supports them as well? So that's where my mind went was how do we make this accessible not only to the students but to the types of institutions that we have. Very good. And Jamie, you had some great advice about teaming up with a bank. Yeah, I think they need to take a look at the, the risk model. I'd be very curious about that. I know they're looking to underwrite it through a neural network as opposed to traditional underwriting, uh, which I think is more promising for them. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be challenging for a bank to underwrite that, but there are other organizations that are going to be far more comfortable underwriting uh, the neural network aspect of that or the crowdsourcing, if you will. So uh, very promising, uh, very scalable, uh, well outside the, uh, the, the borders of Maine, but uh, certainly applicable within Maine as well. Nice. Okay, okay. Awesome. I also, really, really brilliant idea. I love this. Um, thinking about a little bit around the sustainability of it, um, you know, everybody's post-secondary journey is so different. So is there a model where you're including young people who may take a break in the middle of their time? Um, what does that look like? You know, when it looks to sustainability, our um, income potential over time or as we get more advanced degrees or as we maybe pause between advanced degrees, um, what does that look like for somebody's income? And because it is so fluid and so flexible, um, I'm wondering about the sustainability of that from the perspective of as we earn more, what is happening or as we change and maybe we have to work our way back up from point A to point B, um, what does that look like in a sustainability uh, sense for somebody's income um, for something like this? Perfect, okay, so no matter what happens today, both of them are gonna be huge success stories. So if you saw them back to the finals, real quick, what would you like to see? 
So um, I think with with scholar sheets, we talked a little bit about you know what does it look like providing the information back to the institutions that that is going to be very valuable data. Where are those students applying to scholarships? But more importantly, where are they getting scholarships? So I thought that was really interesting. Um, and then I think when it comes to Alpha Dubois, um, you know, really what we want to do is have them for me anyways, explain those logistics around that revenue model. I, I really want to understand that better. So if somebody's investing, but then they're waiting for that return on investment, what does that look like? Right, if Stanford University can do it, so can they. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Jamie. Yeah, with scholar sheets, I was looking, I'd like to have more information about how they plan to extend it. I think it is applicable into some other areas, both in community colleges, we talked about the housing, uh, so that would be intriguing. Uh, with Alpha, Alpha Dubois, I think I'd like to understand, one, the risk model a little bit more, but then understand how they're actually going to monetize the data that through the machine learning, which would be intriguing. Nice, and Kay. Awesome. Um, I think, again, what I would like to see from um, scholar sheets is going to be that data responsibility and protection on one end. I'd also like to know, too, um, if they're going to have a matching model and if they're going to track when the young person gets the scholarship and when it is applied. Um, that would be so fantastic to know. Um, and then if we're able to see Alpha Dubois back, I would love to know a little bit more about how they're going to innovate for um, times of economic downturn, um, especially as it comes to changing jobs, maybe losing income, and things like that. Perfect. Thank you all so very much. We have to take a short break. We'll have our winner up next. Don't go away. I am truly awestruck by the innovation that exists. Fame has fundamentally been a part of keeping the business community here resilient and robust. Our role is to help. Come on in. To have people in your corner that will guide you through the whole process is really helpful. When they say, hey, we believe in this, it's a real boost to confidence. Fame works for Maine, helping businesses and lenders create a bright economic future. It's about helping Maine grow. Albin, Randall, and Bennett committed to providing accounting solutions to Greenlight Maine startups, working with businesses and organizations that operate locally and nationally, arbcpa.com. Welcome back. We just heard from two rising stars, Scholar Sheets and Alpha Dubois, and it's time to find out who the winner is. Judges, I'm going to count you down. Three, two, one. And that means Scholar Sheets gets the green light and is moving on in the competition. Congratulations to you both. Well, that's all the time that we have for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. And if you or someone you know would like to open a business, we have a lot of information on our website. So, so go to greenlightmain.com. You can watch all of our episodes there. And we'll see you right back here next week with two bright entrepreneurs. Have a safe and successful week. Congratulations, come on over. Greenlight Maine would like to thank our premier partner, Bangor Savings Bank, our corporate partners, and our sponsors. Thank you.